I'm uh, Dr. Tim Warren. I'm a chiropractor in Warwick, and I live here in Saunderstown, Rhode Island. And in 2007, I made my first attempt on Mount Everest, and it was unsuccessful. I had a lung infection and a throat infection, and made the smart decision to turn my sorry butt around and go home and try the next year. But I was very excited with all that I had learned and experienced to go back uh, the next year to Mount Everest and uh, make another attempt. And my motto on that second try was uh, summit and safe return because 56% of the deaths that happen on Mount Everest, I realized, happen with people who get to the top and then perish on the way down. So that wasn't going to be me. So I, I was not going to call it a successful trip or a su successful climb to the top of the world unless I was walking back down into base camp after the summit with all my fingers and toes and a pulse. And so that was the first time that I relaxed after a two and a half month expedition in 2008 to the top of the world. And luckily, and uh, the karma designed and come, came together and I was able to summit and safely return to, to base camp. Uh, on the summit day, uh, at the end of the two and a half month expedition, we went to the summit with about 30 total people from different organizations. It's kind of the luck of the draw on who ends up there. Uh, people, a lot of people drop out with sickness or illness or accidents. And so uh, ended up sharing a tent up there with somebody I didn't even know. Uh, but we went to the summit as a group and had a straight shot to the summit, left at 8 o'clock at night, climbed all night with a headlamp, freezing cold weather, um, could sense huge voids of open air below us. Uh, and I was able to get to the top with my climbing partner Pinjo Sherpa at 5.11 a.m. and watch the sunrise from the top of the world it was unbelievable. Uh, something not to be missed for sure. Uh, but we got into a little bit of uh, some stuff on the way down uh, with a straight shot to the top, coming down one of the most difficult technical areas of the climb called the Hillary Step, step so named from Sir Edmund Hillary in 1953 in the first successful attempt we ran into a group that was just stopped of about 10 people. Exhausted, out of their minds with lack of oxygen, couldn't move. We screamed and yelled for them to get to make way. Uh, and after 20 minutes of just hanging on ropes with our, our crampons just hooked into little nooks and crannies of rock, Pinjo and I just had to push our way through so our oxygen wouldn't run out and so we could get down safely. You read today with the, the second American in, the, in, in a week has passed away on that same area of Mount Everest. We see lines, uh, we see photographs online of like a conga line of climbers and not moving at all. There's several reasons for that in my opinion. Number one is the, is the Kingdom of Nepal is a very poor country. It's the sixth poorest country on earth. They issued too many climbing permits. And th th there's some other reasons that in the last five years, there's been less experienced climbers on the mountain and more inexperienced groups of climbers and outfitters based in Nepal. And there's a number of different reasons for that. Um, I, you, I may or, you may want me to go into that or you may not. But that is a fact over the last five years. So there's more people up there. There's more inexperience up there. Not only an inexperience in climbers, but in the logistics and the outfitters that are, are sponsoring their climbs. And the fact that everybody has to summit in a weather window of between five and 10, uh, four and 10 days a year. This year there was a five day window. An extraordinary amount of pe uh, permits were given. Everybody's going for it at the, at the same time. So after being at base camp and trying to get to the top for two months, everybody's just shooting for it at the same time. And that's not what experienced people, experienced mountain climbers do.